and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is BTS, that's Behind the Scenes, a show where we share a sneak peek into the latest edition of the Business Today magazine with all our viewers. Joining in on this show with me are my colleagues Surbi Prasad and Nidhi Single Down. Join in. Welcome to both of you. It's great to have you with us on this special edition of BTS and now to showcase a slight glimpse of the newest edition to all our viewers. I have the copy in my hands and you can clearly see Prime Minister Mo the on the cover and uh, this issue is all about the gift city uh, and we're calling it Modi's gift of Gujarat international finance tech city as well India's international finance services center which is seeing growing interest from investors as the pieces are now finally falling into place with focus policies and regulatory clarity now emerging from that account as well so Surbi uh, let me uh, take it from you because you are the one who's helmed this uh, issue and you know of course the cover story as well uh, gift city has has been long in the making. Of course, we've been hearing uh, several news uh, headlines, news stories around it. Tell us what is really happening right now. What is the status? How much is it developed? And what's the uh, Europe process like now? Hi, Sakshi. Thank you for having me on the show. And you asked such a perfect question <laughs> because this time when I visited Gift City, it was a completely different place. Like it seemed like, uh, you know, BKC complex, which is in the middle of being built up and there are buildings coming up, there are lots of offices and there are people and there's a metro line coming up and overall it was a very pleasant surprise and even when I spoke to people there, they seem quite optimistic about how it's shaping up and the kind of work they're doing there. And even the regulator, the IFSC chairman, he spoke about all the work that is going on and uh, all the interest that is coming from investors. In fact, um, as of date, there are about 580 operational entities in the gift IFSC, which includes uh, about 26 to 29 banks, an equal number of insurers and as many as 80 funds. So it's really shaping up as an, you know, international financial services center that India has been hoping for and planning since 2007 and um, in the last couple of years since the IFSCA regulator was set up and operationalized in 2020, we've actually seen a lot of work on the ground in terms of policies and tax exemptions and there's a lot more focused effort. And um, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, she was also there at the Vibrant Gujarat Summit where she spoke about further plans for Gift City in terms of, you know, having a fintech lab there for sand, regulatory sandbox techs testing as well as, you know, green credit trading and even the Prime Minister was very upbeat about the potential of Gift City and um, there are a lot of investment plans unveiled at Vibrant Gujarat as well. Right. Uh, now, Surbi, also tell us, you know, what are the key challenges that still remain uh, to be handled at the gift city? And, uh, you know, what would next few years really unfold like at, this, uh, at the same place? So, uh, you know, when I spoke to experts and officials, they all believe that in the next two to five years, gift city, the potential of gift city will, you know, be truly unfold and it will be, it will be working like a proper financial international financial services center maybe not on the scale of dubai or you know the one in london but yes it will come out on its own but there are some challenges you know in terms of social infrastructure there needs to be much more development so that people can live there and work out of there and the kids can go to school and you know they have a place if you're there as a day visitor you have proper restaurants and this is just one part of it the other part is that there's more regulatory tweaking needed in terms of you know contract enforcement and clarity on how contracts will be enforced and whether it will be the Indian laws that come into play which will give a lot more comfort to investors and I believe that the <clears throat> capital market also needs to see more activity and that's something which is already working on uh, which is already a work in progress there's plans for direct listing of Indian companies on gift city exchanges that's likely to happen this year and um, there's a lot more activity being planned and businesses and investors seem to be quite upbeat that despite the challenges that are still there it's going to take off and yes I forgot to say that you know now uh, gift city is no longer a dry zone and people who come to work there can enjoy a drink as well <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely and that's at least uh, you know a big big ray of hope 
for uh, all the restro bars to start looking at that as the newest hotspot that they have to open up their franchises and chains. Uh, because if you talked about a similarity between the BKC complex in the beginning and we've seen how a flurry of these restro, uh, restro bars have uh, opened up uh, open air. They're giving us almost those feels of Europe uh, at this point in time as well. So probably something like that opening up in the gift city as well is something that we will look forward to. Uh, well, uh, for that update, thanks a lot, Surbi. But hold on, we will also discuss with you something about the upcoming interim budget in just a bit. Let me take it across to Nidhi as well, who's also written a very, very important story as far as the semiconductors is concerned. Nidhi, uh, the government has now completed two years since it's announced the um, semiconductor initiative scheme worth about 76,000 odd crore rupees. Uh, yet, uh, you know, uh, we haven't uh, really succeeded with any chip manufacturing plant proposal from the big players yet. So, would you say that the government has failed in having a scheme that's not had big takers? Uh, no, not really, Sakshi. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as the headline of the article says, playing the long game, that is like in short uh, and simple words, a response to your question. So, you know, we need to understand that semiconductors is not a short term game. It's unlike smartphone manufacturing, where a company can come up and set up a factory in like a year and a half, two years. And right after that, the phones can be shipped for consumption in India or export. Unlike this, semiconductor factories, when where we manufacture chips, right, it takes long time to build, somewhere around two to three years, and then another six to seven years for it to break even. So this is a long-term investment, and when we talk about semiconductor uh, plants, the investment could vary anywhere between two to three billion dollars to twenty billion dollars. So there are a lot of things at stake. So some companies have shown interest, like Tower Semiconductors. This is an Israel-based, very uh, well-known company. They have shown interest time and again, but again, they need to have a partner who can actually uh, put in a lot of money. Another uh, big point that the government is focusing right now is that any company who applies, they need to have a technology partner on board. So when we say technology partner, it means that any company like Intel or TSMC who has an expertise in build manufacturing chips, they need to uh, either uh, on paper and in, per in person also transfer the technology, help the new company set up the fab, help them understand what the whole process is, how the chips are fabricated. So all those things have to be done because the government has learned from the past. In say uh, early 60s and 70s, Intel at that time was trying to set up a fab, but at that time the government was not serious. But after that, uh, efforts were made in say since 2000 to 2020. And a lot of proposals from big names came in, but they all lack technology partner. So we need to understand that technology is the key over here. Companies putting in money is a big thing, but we need to have players who are really, really strong on the technology front so that all the investment that the government is making, the company is making, doesn't go waste. So that's a key priority thing. So these were the two main things that I would say um, which has uh, resulted in the slow and sluggish start to the scheme. And also we need to understand that since the COVID-19 uh, happened, there was a huge chip shortage in the world. A lot of companies have ex uh, announced their expansions and most of these expansions have gone to countries like US, uh, Europe, Japan, where we already have a good setup of these uh, uh, fabs, we call them foundries as well. So they have this existing setup. The investments have been going to all these places. India right now, we are starting starting from scratch. So a lot of uh, effort has to be put in. So that is the reason these guys are already um, short on talent, I would say. So it's not very easy for them to put in all their efforts and resources into a place where they have to build something from scratch. <coughs> Instead, they're trying to go to uh, locations where they're already present and expanding. Right. Uh, Nanidhi, uh, could you also tell us what should India now do to attract uh, big fabs now at this point in time? So, Sakshi, as I briefly mentioned, Intel tried in early 60s and 70s, but we were not serious. That baggage of the past has continued with us till now. And a lot of companies globally are still very wary that whether India is serious this time around or not. Perception has changed, obviously, prime, right from Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the Metis Ministers, Ashwini Vaishnava, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, going and visiting, going and meeting CEOs of all the top fab companies, right? So that has uh, instilled some trust, but again, still there's a long way to go. Another area where India can really focus on is talent. I briefly mentioned 
um, it is predicted that by 2030 there is going to be a huge shortage of talent um, for the semiconductor industry so if india can think now act now and train staff for the future as in sorry train uh, workforce for the future not just for the indian fabs but also global right it's a global ecosystem that can be a very important thing uh, which will draw fabs to come to india another thing is ecosystem like uh, it's not like in semiconductors it's the world over ecosystem uh, raw material will come from certain countries machines will come from certain countries talent comes from somewhere else so easily around 25 to uh, 26 companies are involved when you talk about um, chip manufacturing so if india can actually have good ties with all the countries build in the ecosystem in india that will also help in getting uh, good proposals to india in the long run okay uh, well, thanks a lot, Nidhi, for all of those updates as well. Uh, coming back to you, Surbhi, you've also uh, written about the upcoming interim budget, which is now days away. And, uh, you know, we've been just thinking and hearing and talking to a lot of people about what's the importance going to be this time around for the interim budget for the people. Should one really have uh, expectations of big bank uh, announcements coming in, more popular measures coming in this time around, uh, just months ahead of the Big Bang general elections. What is your own sense? Uh, what's priority uh, for the uh, finance minister this time around? And uh, how are the, the announcements going to be shaping up like? Uh, thanks, Akshi. So let me start by first giving the disclaimer which the finance minister had given recently that yeah. there will be no spectacular announcements <laughs> in the interim budget. But as always, a budget, and especially one right before the elections, leads to expectation that there will be something populist for the people. Because everyone hopes that, you know, <coughs> the government will give out something in the as they look for more votes and support from the voter base. So um, there is some expectation that there could be some tweaks in the income tax rates or, you know, there could be an announcement on the pension scheme for government employees on which there's a committee set up under the finance secretary and there's also been rumblings about an eighth pay commission although the government till now has said that it's not looking at anything like this but yes there's expectation that there would be some higher allocation for schemes like you know narega or support for informal sector workers and women which has been the theme in past budgets also however we must keep in mind that this government has always stayed very fiscally conservative and they've made sure that the fiscal deficit targets are all, always met and there's expectation that this year also the target of 5.9 percent of the GDP will be met for fiscal deficit although it could be marginally higher because the nominal GDP growth has been a little on the lower side but uh, overall revenue growth has been good and the expectation is that this gives the government some leg room to announce something for the voters as well and for the story, I did an analysis of the past few budgets since uh, interim budget since 2004-05 and I think that apart from the second interim budget of the UPA government, every interim budget has always had something for the voters. So be it the, you know, uh, one rank, one pension scheme or uh, no tax up to five lakh of income. These were all announcements in the interim budgets in the past. Okay, well, thanks a lot then, Subhi, for all of that update. And thanks a lot, Nidhi, as well, for sharing all those wonderful insights uh, uh, to you both. It's been uh, great to speak to you and understand more about what this issue really has. Uh, there's enough and more for all our viewers to take. Uh, so definitely, I'd urge you all to go out there on the stands, get your copies. This has enough and more for all of you who may want to know about India's uh, next big opportunities as it is emerging in the gift city or maybe in the semiconductor space and also what the upcoming budget also really has. With that, we will wrap up this special edition of BTS, but do stay tuned as uh, Business Today Television will have a lot more to offer to you. So don't go anywhere. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel.